back to the golden era uh, and okay. listen to those interesting stories uh, let's quickly right. go back to the you know childhood days uh, the golden okay. days how it all started for you uh, was the cricket the only sport that you played or was it something else oh uh, well i was completely into sports from uh-huh. my childhood as far as i can remember in school uh, i was always in sports and winning and you know champion more into like you know uh, sport athletics and uh, tt tt was one thing my mother was very very keen that i uh, took up so i was uh, very natural with the uh, bat and ball kind of a game and uh, tt also was something uh, you know i was good at and uh, she tried uh, putting me in some camps and uh, mm-hmm. you know but uh, those days uh, there was no uh, academy culture coach right. culture and being an individual game it was very difficult to break into the main circuit like you know and my school already had produced many india players okay and uh, just getting into uh, uh, that circuit was very very difficult you know i had to wait for hours to get a chance to play and uh, and i would get bored you know and i would wait okay. and i would i would see boys playing on the street yeah. and you know i always itch to go and play with them and cricket was something uh, which i i loved very naturally or maybe because that was the only sport which was played and uh, <laughs> I, my brother would play cricket and i would just hang around with him and his friends and you know and they would take me uh, you know do some fielding then they would give me some batting and then they saw that i could actually hit right. and hit well you know then i would be included i would be taken more seriously rather <laughs> and uh, be taken into the team so i grew up playing uh, you know gully cricket as mm. they call it mm. uh, for quite some time and you know my mother was trying to put me into mm. badminton tennis table mm. tennis anything mm. uh, but because see, basically at those days there was not much about women written or spoken about women cricket we had heard about shanta rangaswamy and that's mm. about it and beyond that we didn't know there was a team that existed there were you know players uh, actually there was a, a state team or they were uh, girls practicing and all that yeah. so i was uh, during one of the summer holidays i was in uh, madras yeah. uh, now called chennai of course uh, at my aunt's house mm-hmm. and my mom read in a newspaper you know a small ad which says there's a summer camp for girls okay and he immediately called and said fly take the next flight out come to bangalore there's a camp. they've called for a girls camp mm. you need to i'll enroll you in that and so i flew down to bangalore mm. instantly like you know and then she sent uh, me with my brother to mm. uh, a nearby uh, playground where they announced the camp mm-hmm. and i was expect it's a massive uh, playground here in uh, bangalore right. and i thought the whole playground will be full of girls playing cricket <laughs> and i was i went with that hope and you know and then i didn't find anyone there wow. there were only boys playing cricket and i was like thinking i think it must be a mistake or something mm. so i came back home very disappointed mm. then uh, my mother obviously like you know yelled at my brother she said well, you should have found out more and you know things mm. like that yeah. i was very very uh, disappointed and i you know went uh, slept that night thinking mm. and i don't think there's any cricket for girls and things like that. the next afternoon again my mom said no let me take you and let's find out if actually anything's happening there because there was no phone number or anything like that right you know there, those days there were no mobile or this thing i think maybe a landline i'm not sure okay. uh, they just asked us to assemble or come to the okay. uh, sorry playground okay. so i went there okay. and then i saw a bunch of girls practicing and i was okay. so thrilled to see actually girls play cricket i never seen girls play cricket okay. i thought it was only me who who was playing cricket at that point and then uh, then my mom enrolled me into that camp uh, and like they say the rest was all history i mean i just mm-hmm. took it up to like you know it's a fish like uh, okay. how a fish take water yeah right. and then i i started playing uh, you know and there were many girls my age who had uh, joined the camp it was really nice okay. and uh, then there was a under 15 i think um, mm-hmm. the state team which was uh, announced and uh, on debut i was uh, i led the state team uh, that okay. year yes. yeah so i was uh, you know, captain for under 15 and then of course i progressed to under 19 so people okay. uh, the seniors uh, who were helping us out mm-hmm. and there was also a coach uh, called uh, putra if i remember his name correctly so i could call him my first coach otherwise it was like uh shanta and the mm-hmm. other senior members in the team who were actually conducting this camp 
mm-hmm. and uh, they saw me and they said oh uh, you know they mm-hmm. were quite uh, uh, impressed uh, mm-hmm. the way uh, i played at that point and uh, i remember one of the senior girls in the side said oh she's india material and i i really didn't really uh, at that point i really didn't understand what she meant <laughs> because i was i just like to bat i would go and whack the ball you know hit and yeah. i just uh, i was enjoying that and then uh, like i said the, the state selections happened i was made the captain uh, of the sub junior team and uh, and that that's how my uh, journey began i i then i didn't look back uh, the tts and the badminton all those things just took a back seat uh, you know Yeah. yeah, went for a toss, and I I stuck to cricket, and it it was very uh, natural uh, progression into uh, cricket. You know, I thought this is where I uh, belong, and this is what I wanted to play. And uh, uh, so, which and, which year was this, ma'am? And which academy did you join? Uh, like I said, there's no acad, there was no academy as such. It was just a camp that they announced. You know that there would be a summer camp for girls, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it was uh, conducted by uh, shanta and the karnataka state so i think falcons club to be uh, falcon uh, yeah yeah falcon uh, shanta rangasam she was the one who was uh, running it i yeah. think she uh, made that announcement and uh, the playground was quite close to my house which was very convenient hmm. so i would cycle up this was i think in the year 1989 1990 if i'm not wrong Okay, okay. So you went there. You got selected in the very first uh, trials, and I was made the captain, which was kind of came as a big surprise. Um, you know, uh, to be made captain on debut was like something uh, uh, really amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we had a couple of senior players like yeah. Jai Shree and all, who, who happened to be the manager. And then we had Krishna, yeah. sir, yeah. who was the coach of the team. So we. We went to Kannanur uh, mm-hmm. in Kerala. That was the first South Zone uh, mm-hmm. interstate uh, mm-hmm. tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I had some decent uh, scores there. And you know, first time I saw like so many girls. I mean, you know, uh, mm-hmm. girls from different states playing. Right. Uh, it was a good, good experience. You know, going by train uh, all by myself. And I had longer hair. You know, I didn't know how to plait, so I had to cut it off short. <laughs> That was another. uh think uh, you know my mother was so worried she said uh, how would you manage plaiting your hair you're going to be away you know by yourself for so right. many days right. so these are the uh, the flip side of uh, you okay. know being a girl playing sport and uh, things like that so yeah that that trip was really uh, good and you know it was a different experience because you're by yourself going by train Mm-hmm. uh then you were staying with these girls uh and then we playing the tournament uh, it was wonderful wonderful and then i thought i mean uh, you know this is something uh, mm-hmm. i wanted to uh, do and then of course uh, the tournaments started increasing and then i mm-hmm. of course i moved on to under 19 mm-hmm. i was selected uh, there uh, i got some very big scores uh, mm-hmm. then the under 19 then uh, obviously i got selected for the zone team mm-hmm. you know you, i just followed the pathway and then uh, with under 15 under 19 and um, mm-hmm. and then it was uh, the ultimate dream was to play for the senior karnataka side okay. i didn't think or look beyond that okay. uh, till that point you know because it was like all the big names you know shanta okay. uh, then uh, uh, pramila mamta kalpana all of them were already there mala Uh, then you would always look up to them because they were always there during those camps, and uh, they were the seniors. They would tell us what mm-hmm. to do and how to go about things. Mm-hmm. So I thought, like you know, playing for the senior team would be the ultimate, like ultimate you know, you, thing. you yeah. would have really achieved something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that uh, happened as well. I I, I think uh, because you know we were lucky to have played for Karnataka mm-hmm. uh, because uh, Shanta uh, because of Shanta. Mm-hmm. we were invited for all the invitation tournaments that happened in india mm-hmm. so we got to play a lot of matches okay uh, compared to the other states you know the mm-hmm. girls from the other states did not get as many matches as we did right so we uh, like you know that, that way i got to uh, play with the senior states i pretty early oh. uh, and then uh, i made uh, the nationals in 91 in calcutta Okay. uh that was again uh, when i actually saw uh, sandhya agarwal and uh, 
shubangi and you know we played against the railways in maharashtra and, and i suddenly heard all these big names and we saw mm. i saw them and i watched them play and i said wow uh, this was something uh, nice because you don't get to see them on tv or read much like you so, said not much about them very few things uh, you would read so nice. that that was uh, nice uh, like you know while growing up to uh, you know come face and be, having played for karnataka you know we were always in the finals okay so, so we were we would always uh, get that many more matches uh, right. to play and uh, you know we were getting i uh, saw many uh, play and i think in that 91 calcutta i went at number 10 and i scored some 26 hmm. i remember i think mittu mukherjee or something saying you know even the number 10 batsman is taking guard and she's you know scoring boundaries and who is this and uh, <laughs> uh, you know and then slowly uh, my number kept going up and uh, eventually i think somewhere in the middle order i got you know i was settled around okay um, becoming a middle order bat yeah but you you started as a as what as a bowler as a as an all rounder as as an all rounder in my uh, sub junior junior days i would uh, bat at uh, either number 3 or number 4 okay. uh, then i would open the bowling as well because i was bowling uh, medium uh, pace right. uh, so i was uh, mostly a batting all rounder or you can put it either way bowling order <laughs> round but but what did you enjoy the most i love batting i love batting but unfortunately uh, uh, you know uh, as my career progressed uh, my uh, opportunities to bat uh, reduced uh, being mm-hmm. a middle order and not having too many tournaments uh, you know and uh, obviously the openers getting the lion share of the overs you know you end up uh, um uh, going at the fag end of the innings and you're forced to swing your bat and throw mm-hmm. so you don't really do justice to the hours of practice that you've put in and you know you really want to get a long uh, thing Got at it. the crease to actually uh, you know uh, okay. uh, fulfill your potential right uh, but yeah bowling because being a medium pacer i uh, invariably open the bowling Uh, mm-hmm. or i would come one change okay. so that way i uh, if i did well i would get my full quota of uh, 10 overs i usually did uh, well so uh, okay. so it's uh, been my bowling which is mo- mostly taken me through yeah right so when when you started uh, your career i am assuming that by that time you know bangalore had already produced a lot of national cricketers the men cricketers mm-hmm. were in limelight my question to you is uh, did you look up to anyone uh kapil dev has been my ultimate most favorite uh, cricketer okay. uh, you know i would always probably that's one of the reason i started bowling uh, fast or oh, medium okay. <laughs> okay. otherwise uh, while i played gully cricket i i would bowl all kinds you know off spin spin <laughs> leg spin anything to step bowl fast but when i saw kapil dev you know i was so i mean so taken up like you know with uh, uh, the way he played the game the way he batted bowl field and like you know that 83 world cup had a huge impact and i was a huge fan and because he bowled fast i wanted to bowl fast wow. so i started uh, bowling fast only because of uh, kapil dev and of course coming to women's cricket uh, Uh, Shanta was one like you know we grew up under she actually groomed us uh, so she was the one we always looked up to and learned most of a cricket from her yeah. and uh, and probably that attitude uh, of uh, you know playing and uh, fighting it all, all that the discipline and mm-hmm. everything came from uh, uh, be, uh, playing under her and of course uh, just not her and the entire Karnataka team i mean the way Uh, they played their cricket the way they practiced uh, they were all a huge it's like we never had a coach culture as such okay. we always looked up to these seniors we heard them speak about matches or in or situations in matches and how it was handled how it could be handled you know we were all keen listeners keen learners so we would as kids we would always i was uh, in the senior team i was the baby of the team for quite some time you know i would always uh, look up to yeah. them listen to whatever they were saying grasp everything they said yeah and you know yeah. and that's how uh, uh, we played and uh, i looked up and then of course pramila 
uh, had just uh, made her debut in 91 and she would wear right. her india jersey and come and you know all of us would be wow <laughs> pramila but she is you know the india player the current india player right. and uh, when she would come for practice all of us would like you know look up and say uh you know uh, you know, we would all be very inspired and all struck and uh, yeah. because we were uh, we were the juniors and uh, yeah. and then you know you wanted to yeah. get there some day you know wear that india jersey yeah. so th- at some point like you know all these uh, cricketers have inspired us uh, to okay. do uh, okay. uh, yeah what what were your uh, top 3 learnings from these from your initial interaction with cricket or from your initial interaction with these legends shanta ma'am kalpana venkatachar ma'am yes i mean uh, see as uh, youngsters like we were growing up we were very imp- uh, we had a very impressionable uh, mind mm-hmm. so the the way uh, uh, you know uh, shanta instilled that uh, thing of uh, fighting spirit like you know mm-hmm. she never let us give up you okay. know she would say like you know make us fight till the end mm-hmm. we played cricket in a very very positive mindset mm-hmm. whatever may be the situation you know there was always this confidence uh, because because i was playing the, in the middle order mm-hmm. i would always end up batting with her and okay. i would be very scared very very <laughs> scared but i've had some very good partnerships with her one which really comes to mind is uh, an invitation tournament in uh, kanpur Okay. I think Karnataka had lost all the top order bat for a very low score, hmm. and Shanta was batting at one end, and then uh, I walked in, and then uh, we were playing against the Invitation Eleven, which had all the India players like Pournima and uh, a lot of other uh, India players were there in that team, um, hmm. and uh, you know the way I played. uh that innings uh, she was so happy i mean you know just watching her play from the other end yeah uh, you you would learn so many things the nothing actually uh, uh disturbed her the situation nothing you know she would okay. just go about because her her presence itself was very uh, uh what do you say um, powerful very impactful powerful and oh, yeah overbearing and powerful and the opponents obviously were scared of her <laughs> kind of it worked to her advantage and we us being juniors you know getting to play with her even to, uh, to talk in front of her was pretty uh, this thing but you you know you got to watch her close quarters yeah. and uh, the way uh, she batted the way she took the team out of uh, this uh, the trouble and i had i have shared few partnerships with her and i got to learn uh, quite a lot and uh, you know that match she was uh, a woman of the match but she shared her award with uh, myself and chandrika she had bowled very well oh. to you know she shared her award with us it's a, that's one uh, memorable uh, innings oh. and uh, coming to uh, pramila pramila has been uh, uh, my complete what do you say uh, you know i always had the talent mm-hmm. and i would go and play but i i didn't know what hard work was okay so pramila was uh, the one who was instrumental in me uh, you know going forward uh, in my career because she showed me how to put in the hours how to work hard uh, how to go about improving my strokes it was just not enough to like you know be good at right you know everything you know bit of bowling bit of batting yeah. you were naturally gifted so you would just go about and playing but then if i you know she told me if i had to go a long way or play for india i had to put in that effort so she was a great uh, guide and mentor and uh, teacher and a big inspiration as well yeah. because she uh, led by example uh, she was very uh, much into fitness and you know and we would i would uh, had to wake up very early to so that i could go a uh, practice mm-hmm. with her and she she literally took me under her uh, wings and you know trained me and we would practice so whatever hours that she was speaking uh, uh, in her interview you know i was part of that uh, uh, practice sessions i would be al- there along with her we put in an hours and hours uh, you know knocking 1000 balls 2000 balls a day or you know bowling single wicket Uh, and mind you those days we would not have a box net where i could just pick the balls up okay. i would play a full blooded drive 
and i would run up and pick up the ball and come <laughs> in an open field. Wow. and we would have our own broom in the kit bag so we could sweep the mud off make it a little hard right. you know and right. practice then we would find these spots which had some wall or something so at least it would block the balls right. so we wherever we would get the uh, place okay. we would uh, actually you know she would then call before the nets if the nets was at 3 then we would meet around 132 and then put in you know have that extra one hour or after nets we would have a extra practice so she she was the one who actually uh, took me and 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 uh, showed me how to practice and yeah. work out or how to correct my strokes yeah. you know how to work on something so that you can actually uh, master it and yeah. Uh, yeah. you know so we put in a lot of effort and and i learned that kind of hard work uh from from i mean my uh, the credit has to completely go to like you know she she completely um, took yeah. me under wings and guided me uh, through and through let's go back to your your odis uh, and let's go go back to your debut match uh, this was oh, okay. in this was in new zealand yes so prior to the debut i, I just wanted to briefly tell uh, yeah. my exp my personal experience you know when they announced the So basically, we had this nationals in Bombay, and then uh, I had a couple of good scores, which kind of helped me, uh, you know, make it to the uh, shortlist at 17. But I was still not very sure because they were all very big names, <laughs> and I was always knocking at the doors, but the opportunity had not come. Like I said, being in the middle order, you don't get many opportunities to get those big scores. Prove but uh, Bomb, yeah. so uh, bowling was always there because i was opening so i was getting those two three wickets i was very economical uh, so bowling was always taken care of but it was batting you know if you had to be an all rounder you had to show your batting uh, capabilities as well sure. but in the bombay nationals i opened uh, uh, against mp got some good score and then again uh, again in the finals against railways i got a good uh, Uh, score like you know some 45 50 mm. and i think that caught the uh, selectors eyes and i was shortlisted in the 17 but i i still mm. was not very confident that i would make it to the final 14 okay or 15 you know when they sent us back uh, uh, you know after you know to give us a break from the camp and they said okay get ready and come back I did not carry my camera thinking I'd be very overconfident if I took my camera that I would actually make it to the team. Oh. You know, I left my camera behind and I I told my mom, you know, I'm still not very confident. I don't know if I'll uh, uh, make it, but I, I nevertheless I still went and uh, uh, finally the you know in the Jain uh, we would always be put up in uh, the Nehru Stadium in Delhi and Delhi. the camp was held there. Yeah. Uh, they when they announced and my name was like i did not hear my name at all like you know one by one one by one they kept announcing the names because there was still diana and rajni venugopal and all i when i was still you know calculating in my mind <laughs> where will my name when will my name be announced or so then i i really put my head down and you know when it was towards the end when they were announcing the 11th 12th and uh, still my name was not there suddenly you know uh, i heard my name and it was like oh my god i can't believe uh, i actually made it and then that's when uh, uh, like you know about seven or eight uh, youngsters made their debut so correct yeah, right. mr dadatta wanted uh, to bring in a culture change complete change and uh, get youngsters and when i heard my name it was like totally shocked but i think the shock was more of uh, diana and rajni being dropped rather than others you know making their uh, debut debut but yeah, yeah that was uh, some experience i can't really forget then of course going uh, to new zealand again was an amazing experience you know wearing the india jersey and the india cap you know that's what you work all your life for once you start dreaming and believing that you can actually make it to the indian team yeah. uh, see in women's cricket there was never money or at least when we played there was absolutely no money it yeah. was all passion love and you know just the fact that you want to wear the india colors yeah. so uh, so this was no different for me you know just getting the kit bag with your name on it is like oh wow you know you mm-hmm. have uh, the india it was amazing and then of course we went to uh, new zealand and uh, 
and i was uh, i didn't know because nothing was announced that who the eleven would be and uh, you know and then suddenly uh, i think on the uh, day of the match uh, just before the toss we had a small team meeting and uh, uh, uh this uh, shri ms uh, shri rupa bose was the coach and uh, jyoti joshi was a manager, manager. Uh, you know they yeah manager and uh, she said just to like you know instill that patriotic thing in us like we sang the sare jahan se acha song and uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, it was so nice and you know and then they announced the uh, playing 11 and i heard my name mm-hmm. i was like thrilled uh, to say okay fine i'm making my uh, debut and that's how um uh, it was and india of course won the match and uh, yeah it was it was an amazing feeling you know for us uh, the young, the good part about this team was there was no baggage there was no expectations you know and yeah. there were not many big names it was purnima rao who was the captain of course pramila bhat was there and then of course uh, anju had made her uh, debut anju chander all of Neetu, them had Neetu gone Ma? to england need to david uh, was also making her debut i think at right. that uh, in that tournament there was six uh, of course debutant. there was six debutant. yes and uh, need to myself renu anjum kalyani uh, all of us uh, were making our debut because we came with very good uh, performances in the nationals Uh, but uh, it was only pramila P- puri uh, you know pami puri uh, and uh, maybe peter day was there she was a senior um, apart from that the rest of them were all uh, youngsters you know yeah. and there was no baggage as such to say okay yeah. uh, this is what is expected so everyone were keen to go out and just play and express themselves and that's exactly what we did and i think everyone enjoyed each other's success on that tour it was not like oh someone's done i've not you know you feel yeah. there was no such feeling there was no place for such feeling there was so much of uh, bonding and friend see because um, there were a lot of uh, girls from the north the south the, this thing but you've not really uh, until unless you start playing for the indian team you don't get too many opportunities to mingle except you know the for the couple of hours that you meet uh, during uh, you know after match Yeah. but uh, you know the camps and the air being in with air india and you know uh, many girls were from air india and then the rail- so it was a great time for us to bond and uh, i think that showed on the field as well uh, we started uh, winning and when we won it was like it was, it was brilliant it was amazing uh, feeling you know right. it's always good right. to win on debut it's yeah. beautiful when you say that uh, you know there was so much of companionship there was no hatred there was, there was no jealousy between the players uh, as far as i can remember no we, you know that team i think that's what changed you know until then with the seniors it was always the seniors it was all the big names but you know you don't see an indian team going out perform it's very difficult when you hear stories from others you you don't uh, uh, you know it doesn't come out across as okay it was a team that you know an indian team which went because it was always individual names which was coming up or individual performances which was coming up but nothing translated into a team victory right. but with the new zealand team you know it was all youngsters everyone was you know raring to go wanted to do well uh, but also the fact that uh, nobody were big names Yeah. they were yes big in their own way because with their state teams with their uh, local side but right. when they came together you know when we all came together with as the indian team mm-hmm. it was amazing to see the like you know, the companionship the camaraderie within the team the bonding uh, the friendship you know how much we used to laugh off the field mm-hmm. i think that kind of translated on the field Yeah. you know and everyone enjoyed each other's success uh, beat uh, rty vidas amazing knocks uh, as an opener chander uh, sandhya the uh, puri puri was brilliant on the top uh, pramy of pammi of course was amazing you know everyone enjoyed everybody's uh, success so right. i think that kind of really helped us uh, you know nobody gave us a chance when we actually uh, you know went uh, on the store everybody had written us off but that really didn't bother because i think nobody really cared what mm-hmm. others had to say because we just were wanted to go and play cricket and and then what better than playing the best teams 
Australia. You know, and in New Zealand, yeah, Australia and New Zealand were the unbeatable uh, teams. Those, uh, I mean, at that time and even now, I'm sure. But uh, you know, they were very big names. And uh, in '91, you know, of course, India had not done really well. '93, we were very close, but yeah. still could not make it. Uh, but you know there was potential. But somehow uh, playing uh, Australia and New Zealand, nobody gave us that much of a chance. Important. And probably even New Zealand and Australia thought, okay, it's some Indian team, you know, coming. But when the way we played there, as uh, it was like it was not one individual performance which kind of took us through the tournament. It was those uh, performances from everybody, in, you know, uh, at different times. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and everyone contributed some way or the other and took us uh, through. Right. So and yeah, and uh, my highlight was of course the finals. Uh, you got uh, you I... got Teppi Hockley out. Yes, the, exactly. The, the informed player for New Zealand. The informed player for New Zealand. Not only that, I till then the paces were thrashed. I mean, our pace compared to there was like nothing. But they would always struggle uh, with spin. So Indian team was always heavily loaded with Indian spinner. I mean, you know, four spinner, five spinners, uh, and the Pacers would somehow make up the 10 over quota between them. And uh, till then, the Pacers would never get a full quota of 10 overs because we were getting hit quite uh, badly. But that finals, I got a full. I mean, uh, my bowling spell was. Uh, I got Debbie Hockley out. Uh, you know, caught at slips. Uh, and i got a full quota of overs you know it was a very good uh, spell kind of put a break and pressure on uh, the new zealanders and uh, you know we right. could uh, actually uh, go on to win from there so right. i'd like to believe that my spell really helped and, uh, and at that time it, it uh, yeah it kind of made puri's job also quite easy like you know she didn't have to think about how to complete the last 10 because the 40 overs were taken by the spinners Right. So, but that that match, uh, the faces we all of us did really uh, well. Yeah. Right. This was one of the, I mean, biggest uh, victories uh, for the Indian cricket team because they defeated New Zealand in New Zealand, and of course Australia was also involved, who was one of the superpowers back then. This, this Absolutely, time. there's no doubt about it. Not. See the what really hurts is not many actually speak about uh, this tournament, and uh, we as players believe that this tournament was actually the turning point. Correct. See whatever players from seventy three onwards till nineteen ninety one were the same players. Whatever they played was, if you go back to the team list, you will see the same set of players. There were not many changes, not oh. many victories. Maybe they had individual, uh, you know, matches one or here, but no major tournament was won as such by India. you know uh, it was always individual performance which shown but this team which had uh, six or seven of us making our debut right. actually winning on foreign soil you know against two world uh, champion teams okay. was something phenomenal i think that brought in the belief that india can do well can you know beat uh, be at the top uh, amongst the best of teams you know that belief came uh, with this uh, victory in this yeah. tournament yeah. and and uh, it was amazing you know and i i strongly believe this was the tournament which changed things for uh, uh, the indian or for the 90s and for the players uh, going forward from uh, there because if you see people who made their debut have carried on for quite some uh, yeah. time yeah. yeah so this this tournament really kind of changed it and and i li- like to believe this 90s uh, players were the link which held you know uh, women's cricket and because those days there were no sponsors not too many tournaments if you see not many international uh, matches correct uh, and and to retain players yeah. you know yeah. uh, at that level for them to perform at that level was always very difficult uh so so you know a lot uh, a cre- lot of credit should be given to the players of the 90s so this this tour happened centenary cup happened uh india won by 20 runs the final against new zealand and uh, you know then you all also went to hong kong for for some holiday trip yes. which was again yes. sponsored by wci um, yes and then there came an england tour i think again it was very special for a lot of reasons because this was the first time 
uh, the indians defeated the in the odi i think we were 3 to india won correct. the odi 3 to correct 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 and there were also three test matches did, did you did you play the test matches ma'am or you were only part of the Un- unfortunately no uh, which is again a very disappointing uh, fact or point in my life uh, okay. cricketing career rather uh, is because uh, you know you put in all the hard work uh, you try to make it to the team because you know these camps were very strenuous and very long right. and uh, then you need to consistently keep performing in the camp and you know you put in lot of effort and then you make it to the indian side and you know and you're hoping to make your debut uh, in the test matches and you think you're all set because you prepared so hard for that but the next thing on the day of the match uh, you realize that somebody who was not even in the 15 or the 14 okay. is uh, is made to play in the 11 okay. uh, which was uh, which came as a blow to me because i was uh, hoping and expecting to be played in the uh, play in the 11 uh, in calcutta and uh, and i it came as a shock you know when i was told uh, no no we are we are kind of uh, keeping you back for the odi we don't want you to get into the test match which i really didn't uh, believe at that point but you know have being youngsters and you're in the indian team you really i mean those days there was uh, no support as such you know where you can yeah. go up and question them you know how you could do and right. bring in a local player if that was the case you should have kept up from the beginning yeah. uh, but that that was very disappointing but it's come back to bite me after all these years because not too many test matches were played yeah. and now the pension is being paid only to the test players oh yeah and uh, oh, yeah. and not to the odis and i am one of the casualties Uh, so i'm not uh, considered for uh, pension, pension there yeah because and this was the reason given you know and um, uh, a player who was not even in the first figured in the first uh, 14 uh, got to play straight in the 11 mm. uh, for being a local or i don't know what the reason was at that time but uh, uh, which was uh, quite uh, disappointing uh, personally and kind of somewhere for a player who is like you know it kind of brings you down morale you know you bring your morale down yeah. uh, it it takes a lot of uh, takes a lot to get, you know get back and motivate yourself to get back into that frame of mind yeah, yeah. having said that yes india went on to win uh, the series uh, right. 3-2 right. yeah and it and, was uh, i think it was a it was a comeback after we were down by uh, No, I think uh, two one, right? So England had won Correct. the first Correct. two matches. We had yes. only one in our kitty. Correct. Correct. And then of course Pramila took over the captaincy uh, from Poonima, and, and then of course we uh, finished the series. Uh, we beat uh, England three yeah. two, uh, which was uh, good, you know. And uh, being having uh, playing in India and and especially places like Patna, we got a lot of crowd. Correct. so that that was one thing if you played in smaller towns you yeah. would get big crowds yeah. and uh, and then uh, of course uh, playing in cities not much but then mm. it was good it was a good experience even for the english players i think after that tour uh, uh, everyone decided to wear trousers one uh, <laughs> you know feel sliding on indian grounds Uh, they had bruised uh, their legs very badly and of course the patna crowd uh, they realize it's they're better off uh, i think that when uni- okay. you know i think unanimously they decided to uh, uh, shift to pants than okay. skirts okay. Mm. Okay. and all the success of you know india's win in the centenary cup and then the 3-2 win in the odi against england all this was then building towards the 97 world cup which was to be held in india correct Yeah. How con- how confident was the team uh, you know be- before the 97 world cup it, it was oh we were very confident uh, because one it india was hosting it it was uh, we were playing in our backyards you know we were very uh, and we were raring to go we had the centenary cup behind us we had the victory against the visiting english side wow. uh, we we did all the homework like you know we checked all the boxes we had those Strenuous camps. We had a very good domestic uh, tournament. I think that was the first year when uh, Air India in '97 Air India beat uh, Railways, okay. um, and uh, you know I had a very good performance in uh, the finals. You know, uh, got four wickets and knocked Amazing. the top order off, and that's 
kind of health you know so you building and you working towards the world cup so you're very confident in your mind and that you know we would uh, we had a very good chance of winning uh, this time and uh, uh, somehow when when the whole tournament started and when the schedule when we saw the schedule and uh, where itinerary and where we were playing i think somewhere that kind of uh, put us on the back foot right. uh, you know we all our matches were uh, to be held in the north of india when it, in december oh it was freezing cold mm-hmm. uh, it was raining and the australians and the new zealanders everyone got to play in the south and in bombay and where they were scoring like you know big uh, numbers but just going into that itself and also one match got washed off against new zealand so we are, uh, sorry against sri lanka we i think most of the matches were rain curtailed and all yeah most we, we, i don't think we got any match full full, uh, 50, full 50 over game yeah, no. right. and and see one we shared the points with uh, sri lanka sri then lanka. Uh, new zealand uh, we tied the game with uh, new zealand uh, which was uh, you know very very uh, disappointing uh, for us because you know we were playing to their strengths rather than us playing to our own strengths where it was you know spin was our strength the yeah. wickets and the bat, we should be bat, you know playing on batting tracks yeah. and uh, then spinners could actually run the opposite but then we played into the opposition's uh, hands like you know we were playing in cold conditions swinging <laughs> uh ball uh, it was it was very very disappointing you know on hindsight when you look back and think you know that was a golden opportunity for us to make our mark or put a stamp on the world cup and and then suddenly you realize you're struggling to get into the semi finals your your batsman your top order is struggling to uh, you know uh, get uh, get off and get those big scores and set the stage for us and lot of batting order obviously is being uh, tampered with because obviously you don't know what to do in short shortened matches yeah. you know it's anybody's game it's a 50-50 or already giving your opponents uh, that kind of uh, an advantage Mm-hmm. um so yeah on hindsight when you look back yes that was a big uh, blunder but, but probably because the sponsors from the north uh, you know they mm-hmm. would have got better mileage uh, okay. playing in the north and all that 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 aside uh, purely from the playing uh, players perspective mm-hmm. definitely a blunder oh. and i think that team was amazing i mean a very very good side uh kind of everyone were peaking together we we had already played uh, some cricket together yeah. uh, kind of everyone understood their role yeah but and it, uh, was, well, it was in india so you had lot of crowd support exactly imagine playing in calcutta oh my god oh, we no. went there and we were crying you know i'm sure each one of us must have cried when we went to watch the final of uh, fine oh only uh, you know we wished that we we were the ones playing rather than Uh, Australia or somebody else yeah and i think i was talking to pramila ma'am the other day and she told me that still haunted her that draw against new zealand it haunted her for days to come i <laughs> i am sure it still haunts me i mean uh, the losses against australia in the semi finals you know again it was a rain curtailed match yeah. um you know and uh, i think even the venue was changed if i'm not wrong um, yes yes and initially yeah, it was, was to be held in assam uh, which, which australia refused not to play there due to yeah because there were some security reasons yes yes okay. and then they we they played it in delhi oh, it, it, when things have to go right and you're destined to win everything goes smoothly all the setbacks also kind of work well for you but for us yeah. nothing worked for us in our favor that tournament it was very uh, disappointing because all of us had put in a lot of effort a lot of sacrifices were made a lot of efforts were gone into uh, you know preparing for that world cup uh, but well yeah it definitely haunts uh, just not from i'm sure the rest of the team as well uh, you know that uh, we lost a golden opportunity yeah i can see we, we can go in details about these matches these moments and talk about individual you know players because uh, it was gem of a team uh, but yes, we, due to was. due to the time constraints uh, we'll have to move uh, ahead and move to the next series sure. uh, let's yes. quick, let's quickly talk about the uh, the 2000 world cup which was in new zealand 
again you yes. are you are part of the site so tell me about this this tournament now. yeah this tournament again i had taken a break from cricket because i wanted to pursue my studies because there was no job coming from air india and then like i thought let me just uh, study and then some of my friends my teammates they said no 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 you have to come back and uh, you know they really pestered me and uh, you know i said okay one last shot at the world cup uh, and then i started preparing myself and work very hard to make it to the uh, camp and you know uh, and then we had like 6 months camp in chandigarh um, it was crazy but uh, the, those camps were like really uh, uh, very very uh, uh, fitness oriented intense fitness fitness to an extent it was it was fitness oriented it was very intense but then it was not very when i look back i feel it was not very balanced Okay. you know um uh, uh, a lot could be different but then that's how the camps were conducted those days okay. so we just went along with the flow uh, but and also it the fact that there were so many girls and you don't know who you know you always concentrate just on the core and then you leave out the rest but you actually need to include all of them because you don't know who is going to eventually make it to the 15 right. or whatever yeah. so all that said you know to cut the long story short then the team was announced uh, i made it to the world cup uh, team again this was a good side as well uh, not too bad but then of course there were some uh, little controversies like you know the coach uh, sudarsha she was with us for 6 months and then suddenly uh, shri rupa bose was uh, included in the last minute um, but of course sudha flew with us uh then uh, anju was of course leading the side i think chanda came back from england uh, for this tournament uh, but overall with all these little things you know but still the team was still uh, ready to go and uh, you know uh, do well because again having played in new zealand having won in new zealand that confidence was always there right and there were of course mithu uh, had just made a debut and she was coming into the team for her first world cup i think uh, so it was all good and you know we were again ready to go and conquer the world cup we went with that mindset um, we started off the tour i think uh, the first practice match uh, was again one of my uh, you know very memorable uh, match there uh, the thing was it was extremely windy and okay. uh, and we we never went uh, like how the men go like 15 20 days go get acclimatized yeah. get used to the conditions and everything yeah. we never had the money or the support to go like you know so much in, in a, advance, in advance. And, yeah yes so we would just go in just in time for the tournament maybe few days before mm-hmm. so we got to play one match uh, two matches in one of the matches it was so windy we could not stay fan till you know oh. it would really pushes it was that bad and it was chill very biting cold oh. and windy and you know and we were playing against the president's 11 i think oh. and uh, i don't remember the scores exactly but uh, all i remember is that uh, they needed two runs mm-hmm. of the last uh, over mm-hmm. and uh, anju was still uh, thinking whom to take i just walked up to her took the ball Hmm. and i said i'll bowl this over <laughs> and it was just two runs nobody believed that we could you know do something with it yeah so she just gave, you know uh, and she said okay and then uh, i bowled this last over and uh, i gave one run i got three wickets we tied the game wow nobody could believe i don't i had a paper cutting i think miss uh, uh, jyoti or somebody took the cutting for their uh, thing so that was um, i mean it was brilliant nobody even imagined or believed that we could actually uh, tie a game i mean at least we didn't lose the match wow. you know it was we were struggling there uh, you know trying to stand still and uh, there was this maya maya i don't remember her name exactly so she was batting at one end on 70 or something she got a run and then i got like three wickets and we tied the game and you know it was suddenly there was a new uh, um, josh and spirit and like you know the belief that came back that we could because it was at one point all of us had just given up you know oh, we were right. not able to stand and what was happening against the president's 11 said uh, you know a national side is playing 
right. so that match kind of gave us some uh, confidence right. and uh, we went into the tournament uh, uh, with that uh, frame of mind you know that we could do at least we didn't lose so we tied the game and you know that that little things kind of can change and uh, uh, you know push you to uh, do better so For that's sure. how we started off and uh, of course the tournament went on but somewhere along the line you know somehow we were not getting the kind of start we wanted to uh, and we had a big blow with mitali uh, falling yeah. sick she had typhoid yeah. uh, she was completely ruled out yeah. and and they are quite finicky in new zealand you know uh, they didn't want anyone uh, else they tested all of us if we were carrying the bacteria or something like that so oh. it was all there was a lot of question marks yeah we we had to give them lot of uh, uh, samples and like you know ensure that none of us were carrying the bacteria she she unfortunately fell sick yeah. uh, she was one of the obviously a top order bat and main uh, say but uh, ruled out of the tournament so then again so that again had they had to relook at the batting order right and, i think there was uh, one know, of the player who was again suspected for her bowling action uh there was renu margaret and uh, punima i'm not sure but which is quite uh, uh, funny because they've been playing in, they've been on the international exactly. scene for exactly. so long exactly see, those days we didn't have so much of tv and all and also see they feared india let us be honest they like Absolutely. you know they had to somehow break us <laughs> this way or that way okay and uh, that's when uh, suddenly you know uh, all these guys uh, started because they were local umpires right. obviously there were no international umpires i think only uh, one or two international but they i don't think they officiated in a match so suddenly they called out for suspect action which is like was funny we thought and we thought okay this was a strategy to kind of mind break games. us playing yeah, mind games <laughs> yes but then it really didn't matter they didn't call them they only started talking about it and all that the team was completely behind them we understood uh, you know it was not that was a natural other thing it was nothing to i mean because renu being an in swinger you know somehow your action definitely you kind know, of comes that way and of course puri's uh, thing would never she's play both of them have played before in new zealand not, there was nothing of that sort earlier Correct. so this was just to kind of shake us a bit of course you need those masalas you know in between <laughs> uh to keep it going right. so but then yeah the entire team was behind them and nothing uh, really came out of it but yeah somewhere i think uh, individually the players must have been shaken up a bit okay, uh, okay. you know being on the international scene and then we were already down a player and i think there was another girl kavita also was down with some injury mm-hmm. so we were really literally playing with uh, very limited resources there and was so, that the reason why you had to shuffle a lot with your batting order because i see in the initial okay. games you started as a tail ender or probably in the middle order and in the semi final yeah, lower lower middle order but uh, yeah that's what it was like you know a lot of things like you said the top orders didn't perform uh, to the potential so you're in a world cup and uh, then you moved on to the uh, knockout stage uh, you know in the uh, a uh, league stage you know probably uh, we would have chipped in it's always that case you know because uh, this is a thing with middle order and lower middle order and you if you don't get enough uh, overs to bat you really Game can't time. show your yeah oh. potential but okay with whatever little uh, overs or uh, batting that we got i think we must have uh, chipped in a bit so uh, having seen that you know in the knockout stage uh, they didn't want to take a chance uh so that's when uh, i think the coach uh, mr shirupa and uh, ms anuradha like you know they asked me if uh, if i would open the innings i said i would be more than happy to do it uh, for the country i mean you know of course uh, you're not prepared for it for the last so many months six months you, you know you're not given a new ball to face mm-hmm. you're not you've not batted for long uh, i was in the nets only you know you get a little bit of net practice and things like that but in spite of it you know it was a huge risk but i agreed uh, because for the cause of the team and uh, and we said why not yes. so both myself and uh, puri yes. were asked to open uh, i think against sri lanka i opened with anju 
if i'm not wrong uh, and uh, in the semi finals i opened with uh, kuri so wow. against sri lanka i did i, I got some 30 odd really uh, good uh, sweet knock it was but uh, yeah it was like you know the shuffling happened uh, again so that shows the confusion in in the think tank because right. you're not confident with uh, your uh, core order. batting and then, yeah and that's what happened earlier also we've seen if they don't perform in one or two matches you know you shuffled and the, yeah. somebody else is given a chance and that's that's a huge risk and very unfair to the person Correct. who's asked to uh, this thing so i was asked to open and i i mean i was more than happy because you know anything to ba- you know if they give me batting i'll go any time so <laughs> i said okay and i uh, agreed and uh, because i got the 30 odd i was asked to open again against uh, new zealand uh and of course uh, puri opened along with me again it was a change in batting order uh, uh, it's difficult you know you get very little time to mentally prepare yourself because you're either told on the day of the match or a night before night before also very rare at least i was told but i think with puri it was uh, she was not uh, told but it was all a last minute changes and you right. know a lot of shuffling that happened you know it was a last minute effort by the team management to like somehow get through those uh, league stages mm-hmm. and india did reach the semi finals yes we okay. did reach the semi finals but eventually you know we lost to yeah. uh, new zealanders who went on to win yeah that yeah. that that was it and uh, for for the indian side uh, but uh, yeah. you know, back then did you think that this is going to be my last match this is going to be my last match for india Mm, no not at that point uh, i i was i was still hoping to play a test match i was i i really thought i was good enough to play a test match uh, i always thought uh, you know i i had to be given a chance in the test i i didn't know what would hold for me in the future but it was just that having played so many uh, so many for so many years uh not too many test matches were played in that time because all the right. focus was on the world cup right. and also we personally because I, i was not finding employment i had to fend for myself it was very difficult to you know depend on the family uh, all the mm-hmm. time uh but then i thought okay like because that year i think uh, new zealand was supposed to uh, uh visit india mm-hmm. and i thought maybe i should uh, uh you know give it a shot then I nothing of like hanging my boots or any nothing of that thought crossed my mind at that point but I was very disappointed with the whole uh, way it was handled uh, you know the team and uh, the environment everything was quite disappointing because you're used to a certain level of uh, uh, professionalism. team professionalism exactly that's the right word but uh, at that point i was quite disappointed uh, at the way some of the players were treated and things you know the way what whatever was happening at that point uh, then I, we just came back and i think we made a, a, we air india went to england mm-hmm. for a tournament right, right and for the first time in my career i felt sick and i had to sit out uh, because i had high fever Okay. and i think at that point when i was in the dressing room alone uh that's when i decided if, if it was all uh, really worth uh, you know uh, sacrificing so much continue because the future didn't really look right because i thought it, there's going to be another tournament and a tournament after that and it will go on but where will where will it all end uh, for me so it was a conscious uh, decision then i thought uh, because i had just enrolled for my mba as well okay and i thought uh, uh, i had to you know if i had to make a decent shot you know give uh, my life uh, or myself a decent shot i need to move out of cricket and explore the other side or the outside world i know or yeah. out of cricket and that's when i decided that i i didn't want to play anymore so that uh, trip in uh, england kind of uh, did it for me like i said uh, this is it i don't want to play anymore and because it takes uh, you know if you're playing uh, after playing for india and you know this thing you just cannot you know practice for some uh, few days and then expect to just go you know you you will being the person that you are you will put in the hours you will uh, go through all those uh, 
drills and uh, uh, the you know and the end of the day then you keep wondering what okay. really happened because see for most of the players they were already employed with either railways and right. few of them with uh, air india air india so yeah they could go on but uh, someone like me i had no job uh, okay. no this thing so i i had to give myself uh you know i told myself that i need to educate myself you know i went on to do my mba and uh, okay. and then that england tour i decided that i didn't want to play anymore so you you were what 27 back then when yeah. you okay so yeah, i decided to it is considered to be one of those prime years when when a cricketer absolutely it was it was a prime uh, you know for any cricketer and and if you see the history of women's cricket Correct. uh most of the india players have gone on to play well into their 30s and uh, mm. late 30s sure. and you can if you fit mm. uh, we could continue playing but for me uh, you know having uh, you know the mindset that i come from bangalore and uh, the south indian mindset is very different right uh, you know you don't settle for uh, uh, things like you know you said chalo it's okay I'll play for india i'll continue playing and then what i i had to you know tell me so that i need because all my uh, classmates had gone on to become professionals uh, mm-hmm. they were studying they had lucrative jobs they were flying everywhere and i was thinking uh, like you know i'm doing the same thing for the last so many years and it's not uh, i'm not moving ahead mm-hmm. uh, in life and uh, that's uh, you know that's a sad feeling to have actually you really want to go out on a high you know you want to continue playing mm-hmm. because you're so passionate about it Uh, but then uh, yeah the the financial aspects come into play and you know you you can't forever be dependent on your parents to foot your bills so Correct. i decided to hang my boots and say you know i've had good fun i played two world cups and yes like you said like how it haunts uh, pramila you know mm-hmm. tying that game Uh, losing twice in the semi finals uh, haunts me even to this day it hurts that you know mm. we could have just gone a step ahead or probably if i'd done this mm. or probably if i'd done that yeah but it's all ifs and buts but uh, overall yeah it's been that short a short stint has been good yeah some fond oh. memories few regrets but oh, all in all all good Yeah. Right. I'm I'm sure when you like look back when you retrospect uh, there would be a lot of positives as well because there's there are two which I clearly remember one is that there's this uh, cricketer called uh, Sindhu uh mm-hmm. Sindhu Sri Harsha whom you spotted mm-hmm. when she was playing in a locality in Bangalore and she went on to represent uh, uh you know Karnataka initially and then now she's captaining the USA side Ah oh, okay did she say that I spotted her uh she did in one of the interview she told that oh, she uh, did. okay that's very sweet <laughs> yeah she she lived a uh, few houses uh, down there very close to my place and i was already famous in the area because i was playing cricket and i've lived here for yeah. quite some time yeah. uh so it was good to see someone actually uh, you know other than me pick up a bat and play with the boys and she was quite good Okay. and she was a good wicket keeper with lot of potential uh, i believe but i i didn't play much with i think i must have played just one tournament but i i would see her mm-hmm. uh very often probably must have uh, you know uh, advised her or guided her way to go or how to go about uh, things yeah. because i was already playing for air india once i played for karnataka mm-hmm. then moved on to play for air india i didn't i i think i came back and played in 2004 for karnataka one uh, season they asked me to Okay. come back and uh, i played uh, other than that i did not come back and play for uh, uh, karnataka so but i was always in touch with uh, some of the girls who would come up to uh, me like you know either i was giving them my kit or mm-hmm. or wanted to practice i would practice with them or as some advice here and there and sindhu was one of them and she she definitely had good potential i think she could have made it into the indian team but uh, I really don't know what happened but I'm glad I'm glad if she, see if she was destined to represent a nation somewhere <laughs> she's gone ahead and done it in US and she said definitely uh so yeah she 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 was a kid who grew up uh front of my so yeah. and then she did she did particularly mention you because you were the one who showed her the path to you know taking a professional cricket Correct. I think you had Correct. asked her to join a cricket academy where she went yes. and that's how yes. the journey began for her 
yes see in bangalore like uh, the cricket academies came uh, much later not when i was when i started out okay. there were very few uh, they were all clubs uh, oh, you know and then they would have summer camp but then the academy culture started picking up hmm. and uh, one thing i should always be grateful and i should mention that wherever we went uh, you know or approached any cricketer or any club Mm. nobody said no to us they would always accommodate us give us batting practice you know you would always wanted to play with the boys yeah. uh, because you tend to improve much more than what you would uh, you know just playing with the girls correct uh, so beat mr irfan said who's again contributed uh, big time to karnataka cricket and correct. women's cricket produced many uh, cricketers you know who right. uh, under in his academy uh so yeah like uh, that way i would always uh, guide all the youngsters to you know approach uh, these clubs or academies to uh, enroll themselves and practice and you know start off from there mm-hmm. because then they have a strong foundation all uh, right uh, what i've also read is that uh, you were involved in the initial days of uae cricket the uae yes. women's cricket tell, tell me about that stint tell me about that experience. yes that was uh, way back in 2006 i had already given up cricket had moved on but i was working for hp okay i had finished my mba and i started working for hp and the hp used to have this uh, inter department uh, matches and right. uh, and i said i wanted to play obviously people knew of me playing for india and uh, Uh, things like that. so they said okay okay you you have to play for our team so they made a, and they already had a rule saying that two girls would be part of the team mm. and it was a tennis ball tournament mm. and uh, so everyone was like oh you already have an advantage because she is playing and uh, things like so there uh, there was an umpire uh, uh, called prasan uh, you know now he's a technical head with the south african team i think okay uh-huh. uh, Hmm. and uh, he used to umpire uh, for the he officiated those matches hmm. and he was uh, you know and he would send me all these uh, analysis after the match and i would think i would think oh my god what a crazy guy you know for these tennis ball matches is taking so much effort and he had done a brilliant job you know analyzing each and every stage of the match bowlers analysis batting analysis uh, uh, you know a wagon everything was done and he would send me and he would say uh, you know ask how it is and you know give his feedback and all that yeah. and i would in fact i wanted to put him on to uh, shubhangi kulkarni like you know she was uh, looking after women's cricket uh, those days mm-hmm. and um, but unfortunately there was not um, uh, too much scope for technical guys in uh, women's cricket you know though, mm-hmm. at that point in time but somehow i think he mm-hmm. found his way to uh, Uh, the nca and uh, he was with venkatesh prasad uh, okay. with some of the state uh, sides oh. and he called me one day and said uh, would you like to go to uh, dubai mm-hmm. or oh, you i said uh, for what no no they want to uh, do something for girls cricket and why don't you go and uh, help them out i said okay why not so that's how uh, uh, i i got in touch with uh, Uh, there's a gentleman called Shahzad Altaf uh, from Pakistan, and uh, there's uh, uh, Sheila, uh, you know, Razdan who works for ICC, mm-hmm. and they all got together and uh, they were trying to promote women's cricket. Mm-hmm. So they called me over, and uh, we I had about 15 days or three weeks, I think, for two weeks to three weeks in the uh, UAE. Yeah. Believe me, I went from school to school, okay, uh, every day. from morning till evening i would visit every school coach them then talk to the parents talk to the teachers you know telling them to send their daughters and the girls to uh, uh, come forward to play cricket and i would go and coach mm-hmm. i did that for like 2 to 3 yeah, two weeks and at the end of and then in the evening uh, there was uh, nets in sharjah uh, you know where the girls would come and uh, practice at the end of that uh, two uh, three weeks i think uh, we had a tournament mm-hmm. uh, one six side and one uh, double wicket you know just to uh, give it because we didn't have so many girls so we decided to have this and believe me what a tournament it turned out to be it was all last ball finishes 
and the girls were all, like it was amazing you know uh, and it it really felt so good that actually all the hard work that we put in those 15 days and uh, 20 days talking to parents talking to this thing they you know it all kind of culminated into a beautiful ending you know and i think that's when uh you know uae and also at that point i think the asian cricket council was also looking to start something for women's cricket and yeah. and some of the countries had already merged with their uh, men's board yeah. and they wanted to start cricket at a grassroots level and uh, then this asia cup uh, not asia cup i think uh, uh, for all the a team which not the non test playing teams bangladesh malaysia okay. uh, china Indo- indonesia yeah, singapore indonesia uae and qatar so i think that uh, where i went and uh, set the foundation uh, kind of they started building on that like you know we went and spoke to schools asked them to start teams so that you know we promised we're going to have tournaments and which they did uh they had to, and the girls started uh, coming and i i really focused on very young school girls mm-hmm. simply because i know the life span of a cricketer you know especially yeah. a women cricketer those days they would do school college and then you know if they reach somewhere probably they would pursue otherwise uh, they would not uh, really continue you know if you were actually focused on older girls mm. who are finishing and and ua being uh, a country with lot of expats mm. there was no grip on who would stay who would not okay. you know things like that so we picked a young lot mm. and uh, the tournament kind of worked out uh, it brought out a lot of youngsters mm. uh, we uh, recognized lot of uh, youngsters and then uh, you know asked them to join uh any academies close by so that you know they didn't have to depend on anyone to take them and bring them back but that doesn't doesn't work like that in uae yeah. you need the uh, help to you know drop and pick up yeah. uh, the some of the girls did join uh some clubs and started playing okay. uh that was good and and then of course the next year i got married and i yeah. ended up there yeah. and uh and i'd already seen these girls because and mm-hmm. these were the bunch of girls that i had already worked with and knew them sure. and i knew what they were capable of and uh, then uh, mr mazhar khan obviously said uh, if i could uh, you know uh, take the team uh, and help but the again the flip side is we were getting to practice twice a week thrice a week and you know, with someone who is starting off and you want them to represent a national side mm-hmm. uh, it was very difficult Uh, but somehow you know some of them were very gifted natural cricketers yeah. so somehow we got them all together and uh, we put up a team and uh, uh, you know and took them to uh, malaysia and uh, it was it was nice joey has see, done it, joey has done extremely good in last 3 4 years exactly that uh, i think from then on uh, you know i did uh, request uh, the association to have more tournaments or i said mm-hmm. you know we could take them to india expose them or yeah. get an indian uh, any club side would also do or a state side would also do right. you know to give them match practice and match exposure uh, yeah over that i think that was the foundation where uh, a lot of cricketers came out of that uh, uh, you know exercise that we did or the stint that i had with them and right. of course they went on to build uh, and they did pretty well and then of course qatar and bahrain and Nep- you know all those teams started yeah. having them they would have the gcc cup and you know hmm, then yes. the asia cup gulf, so gulf cricket yeah gulf cup gulf cricket cup and all that stuff um, so that was that was nice and then of course they we we they had other uh, girls coming to help them out and all that amazing so it was a good experience <laughs> yeah So last last two questions uh, because we have already spent 90 minutes in the conversation. Oh, have we? Oh my god. <laughs> It's only 90 right. minutes and that's the beauty of cricket, right? You don't realize. Right, yeah, you don't realize. True, true. Okay. True. So, uh you played for India you have got 22 matches uh, under your belt and then you have also contributed, uh, you know, to UAE cricket uh, for example like we just spoke about. What next for uh, Smita Hari Krishna ma'am? 
have you have you decided uh, have you got any plans now i i um, cricketing wise uh, not really to be honest uh, okay. i i did my uh, level 1 and level 2 and all that but it's uh, just that like you know uh, after cricket and my uh, little very short stint at the corporate world uh, i got married and of course i have two little children uh, i was running a restaurant uh okay uh, that took all my yeah i it took all my time uh, away from my kids and uh, that was a good experience as well was uh, it in india but now, was it in dubai no, no no yeah it was in dubai and uh, but now i've moved i realized i had to give a lot of time to my children they're very young they're 11 and 8 okay. uh they are, because i didn't have a support system there you know it was just me and my husband looking up so it was uh, something consciously i moved out and uh, the thing cricket wise see cricket is always there you know it's mm-hmm. it's a passion you you are always connected to either the players or the match you know you're always in touch uh, uh currently uh, i'm in bangalore of course um i'm uh, so my mom's a bit unwell so i've just come to be with her um like like uh, you came up and said you talked about you know it's like i said it's been such a, a long time since i've reconnected and spoken about cricket so much uh yeah cricket is there uh, if if it happens uh definitely uh consciously i've not really thought about it uh, maybe at, in uh, in couple of years when my children are more independent yeah. i think i would uh, come back in some capacity or the other okay. uh, yeah it's always good to bring in a change and uh, you know change for myself you know, to reconnect back into the uh you know back right. be back with the game yeah right right we would love to see you back uh, what capacity is is up to you to decide ma'am be it coaching uh, be taking up a new yeah team. yeah i'm not too sure yeah could be coaching could be administration could be com- i don't know uh, it's it's so many avenues have opened up now uh, <laughs> true, true. thanks to media and uh, bcci uh, taking women's cricket under them and uh, Right. yeah it's nice in if i can contribute in any way yeah it would be it would be nice my final question to you uh, any quick thoughts for the upcoming cricketers for the for the cricketers in the current generation oh i i feel they have it all they are very smart and uh, they they play so i mean you know it's nice it's nice to see uh, so many youngsters i just want them you know i want india to win the world cup uh, you know that's i think something missing from a i mean they should do justice to the pool i mean the talent pool that we've had in the past that we have now it's just that we're not able to convert that into a serious victory you know and i think we need to be consistent and uh, have more and more match winners and more uh, uh, players like mithali uh, smriti mandana and harman pre I, mean, i think it's in good hands uh the doing a fabulous job i think they uh, it's just now it's i think it's all in the mind for them to believe that they are capable of uh, winning uh, the world cup and i think they need to work towards that and it's just matter of time uh, that they can make uh, the dream come true for all of us who uh, failed and it really hurts us even today so yeah uh one 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 more last question uh, i don't yeah. want to end this conversation for some reason <laughs> uh who who from the current lot from the current uh, players uh, do you think you know is there to stay for a long long time oh uh, see not everyone can be mithali raj to be honest she right. carried the women's cricket to the last 20 years two decades that's a lot of uh, this thing i mean the kind of dedication just not her her parents her family has shown is uh, incredible it takes a lot of uh, effort and sacrifice and Uh, focus uh, if if someone can do that and carry women's cricket forward it be amazing i think then uh, it can really feel proud but it should not just be one i think it should be a bunch of them yes, who yes. should be carrying it forward uh, you know yes. and and the current lot has shown a lot of potential uh, you know the smriti mandana harmanpreet uh, there's uh, jamaima rodrigues and yes. there's uh, plenty of new youngsters deepthi sharma you know there are a lot of names uh, correct you and family of you or not but it's up to them how they would carry uh, just not themselves but the entire team on their shoulders and entire women's cricket because would look up to them if there's an IPL for women's cricket coming up or talk uh, these are the players need to show 
and bring or you know encourage uh, other cricketers to take up so that you know uh, the pipeline or the talent can keep flowing in yeah. because uh, because they'll have to hold their hands and take them uh, forward so i hope uh, these kids can uh, do what mitali has done for the last 20 mitali julan you know uh, uh, the rest of them i hope uh, someone can step up and uh, not just one like i said there has to be a few uh, then it becomes easier correct so, correct for women's cricket to survive uh, and uh, you know and to make a mark uh, in the international scene I mean, and for that we need to win big world cups i think that's when uh, people sit up and take notice uh, you know even for just not cricket lovers even for the general public uh, for them to show interest and uh, uh, get viewership that deserves cricket talent wise uh, everything is amazing as good as uh, the boys uh, but you know just to keep that interest going and uh, and and the, you know they wa- would want to want to come to the stadium to watch yeah. uh, you need the big performance big wins and uh, world and nothing like a world cup in our uh, against right. our name right sure. yeah let's hope for the best and on that very positive note i well, although i don't want to but i'll have to end the conversation <laughs> because i know for a fact that we want to keep it very short crisp precise yes. uh, thank yeah. you so much ma'am for your time and uh, you know for coming on the uh, on on the chat this is the first time that i'm interacting with you and it was a great and it was very insightful chat i must say thank you it's my uh, pleasure uh, vishal it was good talking and you took me back many years uh, some of the things that faded away you refreshed my memory uh, you got back some uh, you know smiles and yeah some not so good moments but it was overall like i said all in all it's been a good journey it was yeah. good talking Uh, going uh, walking down the memory lane yeah and i want to wish you good luck because it's nice to see someone actually uh, focusing on women's cricket you know we've never had this in the past and uh, very few here and now it's nice to see that actually you're showcasing uh, uh, some of the uh, you know old cricketers who have uh, not really uh, been on the scene and you know you talking to all of us it uh, it's nice it's uh, it's good and good luck to you and uh, your show i hope uh, uh, it it does wonders you know it kind of uh, bringing all the news of women's cricket and get generates the kind of interest that it deserves absolutely that's the whole idea that's the bottom line yeah, yeah. all the conversations and everything it, it should encourage a lot of young girls tomorrow whoever sees absolutely. this you know i want her to be like super pumped up yes now i want to play you know for these legends not just for myself mm-hmm. but i want to make sure that india wins the next world cup so that's the absolutely. whole absolutely whole idea yes absolutely i hope i hope your program can inspire few cricketers uh, not few many cricketers <laughs> uh, uh, to take up the game yeah and we want to see you back uh, in the in the circuit <laughs> uh, insha ganesha let's see hopefully <laughs> if it happens you will definitely know amazing amazing Thank you so much. Thank you so much once again.